Speaksies. She looked up from her phone and asked us how many years a cat should live. And I asked why. And she said, because I now have a 22-year-old cat. Welcome to Origin of Speaksies. My name is Scott. I'm here with my friend Steve. And I don't think that's a normal age for a cat, Steve. It's not. And the first question I asked was, who is giving you a 22-year-old cat? Like, how does that process... Yeah. What is the the process of that? And what it turns out was that um, the person was looking at their phone and had noted their cat's birthday. So okay. they owned the cat. But like the realization hit them that they had a 22-year-old uh, cat. That's what they were doing. And we had they... to clarify. It wasn't just me. So it was with a group of people at a business function. So yeah. I made sure what, I wasn't the only one that heard it wrong. We all explained to her. We thought you you made it sound like that you had acquired a cat. Right. Or someone had given you a cat that was 22 years old. Yeah. And as like someone, she adopted like like a 22-year-old cat found their forever home. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's like you know adopting someone who's seventy nine years old. <laughs> yeah. Um, Although that that has some interesting possibilities. Yeah. You get a you had seventy nine year old. You could learn a lot. You'd learn about good TV shows like Matlock and Murder She Wrote. Yeah. They get jump real early in the morning. And with a cat too, that's um, you know the less of a chance of it murdering you, which I discuss with yeah, my true. daughter often, and she disagrees with me that cats want to kill us. All the time. And oh, if they that's, were bigger, that's true. If they're bigger, they would. And she's starting to understand that. I feel like this is now multiple episodes where you've mentioned that you and your daughter have debates about animals. Is this like a normal thing that happens? Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, you know, as listeners of the show know, I, I seem to bring up animals all the times. But animals I do like include cats. I like cats. Right. Um, oh, so she's the one, in this case, saying animals would kill you if you can. And you're well, like, no. she's... She doesn't understand. I'm not saying it as a bad thing. No, it's, it's just a, res- a fact. Absolutely. And well, you know, if cats, a big, you know, a cat that was our size would be a tiger and a tiger would kill us. That is one of the wonderful things about cats, which is it's like having a mini killing machine that you control or yeah. you don't really control them. Yeah. No, a bad, yeah. bad way to put it, but that you can have live at your house and they yeah. can't kill you. And they can't kill you. It'd be like having a miniature, uh, like a miniature Jason in your house that like didn't have real knives. You know, yeah. you just have him run around. He'd be pissed all the time. You get the the music, but he couldn't actually do anything. That's how that's how it is with the cat. Yeah, except the cats. You know, Jason at least will interact with you. He'll kill you, and cats just don't really care. They're no, just like, they I don't hope care. You, I hope you feed me, and if you don't, I'll go kill something. And right, you know, you, you're just lucky to get to spend time with me. So my, my friend did not acquire a 22-year-old cat, but she is now the owner of one. Um, and for what I've seen, cats, you know, getting getting a cat close to over 15 years is pretty impressive. Yeah. So this cat's, this cat's lived a, a, a long life. That cat's not going to pass away and people are going to go, you know, if only one more bird yeah. or mouse. One more hairball. Or squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it cats, lives. cats are... Or one of our favorites around here. Uh, one of my other favorites are cows, mm-hmm. and the reason the reasons are multiple. Number right. one, I mean, in their own way, they're kind of cute. They're kind of chill. They they don't you know they sit around grazing, and I have a great if you go to on my personal Twitter. Mm-hmm. There's a a wonderful picture that I've chosen as my background, which is just a cow on the beach staring into the ocean. I like that. It's just. One of those, you know, you look at it and it looks like it's just wistfully looking into the ocean. So cows. Um, cows. It, yeah. I think it's very interesting that your personal background. Mine is actually a picture of a bear. And I think really? I, I used that, to have a bear on like my Facebook. Yeah. I do that just to make sure when I'm on Twitter to be prepared. Yeah. So the bear, as we've spoken about before, the healthy respect for bears, but cows aren't going to hurt anybody. I don't think anybody has like bovine phobia. I mean, I mean, I guess everybody has a fear. People are always scared of everything. Scared of everything. But tonight's episode, we're going to yes. focus on meat. Yes. I am chomping at the bed over here. I've been waiting <laughs> to just step. When, once you start talking about cows, I'm like, it's going to happen. Get ready. We're going to have a meat themed episode. This is wonderful. We're going to have a meat themed episode. And, it, it, and I'm going to tell you how this started. So 
as much as I just sat here and talked about how much I do kind of like cows. Now, look, I don't want to hang out with cows. Apparently, they're killing the ozone with their gas. Uh, and, you know, they slobber and they're kind of gross. I'm just saying, you know, I'm not the biggest animal guy, but I mean, but cows are delicious. I mean, I, I, I don't have to tell you. It, oh, I know. You're it, preaching to the choir here. And as I stated a while ago, animals are best when they're dead. And <laughs> when a cow's dead, he's meat for you. And that's awesome. Right. That's and a great thing. You're honoring the cow by enjoying yeah. its its meat. And so there are, there are many different variations of the, of this one that we're going to do. So mm-hmm. we're going to talk about beef. 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 Beefing, having beef with someone. Yeah. Beef up. Where's the beef? We're going to say beef a lot. Yeah. And this all started because I happened to be on Worldwide Words. Yes. And I was looking for something else. And I don't even remember. Mm-hmm. And, and Steve, we talk about this sometimes where we kind of have a game plan of what we're going to do for our episode. And then something yeah. else just te- just catches our heart. And we mm-hmm. go, nope, we're going with this. So I was looking for something else. And I saw a entry for <laughs> beefing. Beefing. Okay. And that stopped me in my tracks. I said, it's beefing. St- it's stopping me in my tracks there. And it was like, as long as we, I was going to say, as long as we don't say, hear that term again, this will be a good upset. So I like, there's a little tension, a little drama here right now. But beefing. I'm, but it's about meat. So it's going to come out okay. So I said, what is beefing? What is beefing? And I clicked on it and I go, oh, oh. So it's like when somebody has beef with someone else and I go, oh my gosh, we got to do this one. And then, it, and then all of a sudden it hit me. There, there's a lot of um, different meat words and phrases we can do, but we're going to keep it to just a couple on this one. We're going to start with beef. So so the etymology of this from Wiktionary.com, just the word beef, beef. is a chunk of beef. <laughs> the word beef means a chunk of beef mm-hmm. from Middle English. Beef, beef, boof, was borrowed from the Anglo-Norman boof, Old French, boof, which was for an ox. Modern French, boof, from Latin, Bus for an ox. It's the same derivation as the word bovine, which mm-hmm. makes me think of our boy Robert Banquet, who's okay. a bovine podologist. Yeah, we should have brought him in for this one, but I think he would take it a little too personal. So it's probably good yeah, we, you're right. And you you're start right. getting into somebody's actual profession, he'd probably he'd probably be like looking at me like, dude, you, you're out of yeah. your depth. So Steve, um, what do you think the plural of beef is? Hmm. I'm wondering if it's like deer. Plural okay. of deer is deer. Mm-hmm. Plural of beef is beef. So that's correct. Yes. There are actually three accepted plurals of the word beef. All right. First one, and probably the most accepted, is beef. Beef. Second one is beefs. Beefs. Okay. Kind of like the pimples, mm-hmm. the beefs. And the third one is beeves. Beeves. B E E V E S. Hmm. All those beeves out there. Yeah. So just the word itself is, pr- is pretty good. According to Wiktionary. Org. Mm-hmm. So the the I just I'm just gonna read some of this because sure. the it's about the, the definition noun beef and then it says I love eating beef. That's the that's the um, sample sentence. Um, it's the edible portions of a cow. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I've heard people saying um, meat and beef interchangeably. Well, they're they're not interchangeable because beef refers to meat from. A cow, correct? Beef refers to edible portions of a cow. Uh-huh. So even beyond the meat, anything. So, so the marrow is actually beef. Okay. Okay. Anything you eat that comes from a cow is beef. Meat is just animal flesh, right? Um, so uh, it also just beef can also refer to bovine animals, mm-hmm. a single bovine being raised for its meat. And so the plural would be beeves. Do you want to raise beeves? Hmm. Um, put some, and, but then also there's the slang, which we're about to get into. Okay. Put some beef into it. Okay. We've got to get the car over the bump. We've got to get some beef into the enforcement provisions of that law. So you want to beef something up. It's mm-hmm. slang. Um, and then of course we've got the, this guy's got a beef with everyone. Right. right? Um, I've got a beef with you. So we're going to get into all that, but I, I wanted I to start wait. just with, um, Simply saying the different ways that you can talk mm-hmm. about beef and what beef itself is. Yeah. What's the beef count you think so far in this episode? Probably at least 100. Know. I'm interested in what the beef count is because we've said <laughs> beeves multiple times. The beef. The beeves. All right. So from the English Stack Exchange, I got this. So beef 
as slang, it started as a verb. So back in okay. 1888, it was used as like having beef with someone. And then it took a noun meaning in 1899. So the, the kind of urban version of that actually originated? This that, go- that's how it started? This goes back so much further than you, than you think. You, My thought was that having beef with someone or w- would have been you know, something 20th or, you know, 20th century. Right. It's not, it goes way back. So it started as a verb in 1888 as to complain, gripe, grumble, or protest. Um, so you're beefing about something. Mm-hmm. Even before that, it meant talking loudly or idly. Um, in 1888, there's a quote in something called New York World. It says, he'll beef and kick like a steer and let on won't never work. Wait, what the hell? So these old quotes, yeah. he'll beef and kick like a steer. And then in 1899 is when he said, he made a horrible beef because he couldn't get a loaf sugar for his coffee, mm. which I can't blame the guy. Yeah. And that came from fables and slang by George Aid. Um, so, I mean, this goes way back. So somebody made a beef, but, but why? Okay. So I found this website called Hot Idioms. I like that. I it, know. It sounds like something that would be on Tumblr. It sounds really inappropriate. Yeah, it's like hot idioms, really. Mm-hmm. But uh, I I can't believe I haven't stumbled across this before. But they were talking about what um, what the beef where that came from, mm-hmm. and they start and, and they led off the conversation, so pointing out that apparently Jimmy Fallon, whose show I I don't watch, mm-hmm. has a segment called "What's the Beef," mm-hmm. and he makes up fake beefs between people, which actually is kind of a funny concept. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, but hot idioms throws out this potential origin. It says having to do with the ownership of cows in quote cow feuds, Hmm. which resulted in owners who argued over the best interest of the cow and typically got the cow slaughtered and led to owners having beef with one another. So, so that makes sense. And I could see that being, um, I actually do um, have friends other than Robert Banquet that um, work with cows and will, We'll buy and sell cows at auction, and we'll buy cows younger, grow them up, fatten them up to sell them. Okay. Um, so there is, I could see that being a very contentious situation because it's a, it's a commodity for you. It's basically it's buying a stock low and finding a way to grow it out. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's a it's money. It, it it makes some sense to me, but I will tell you, I didn't have any. You know, hot idioms didn't really come in hot with any. Uh, um, references for that. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know that that could be right. And, and it, but generally as I looked a- across different websites, I found two main origins that one not included. According to etymology online, it comes from American soldier slang. Okay. So essentially it was soldiers in the 19th century, the late 19th century complaining about their beef rations. Mm-hmm. Quora though has a different, uh, a different, um, origin, which again, I found this in a few places, but it says, as regards to the etymology of beef, it seems to go back to the cry of hot beef, mm. meaning stop thief. And again, it doesn't really say how, you know, just why would hot beef mean to stop a thief? Yeah. But it, they said that in the 18th century, crying hot beef meant to raise a hue and cry. So it was to raise an alarm or make a fuss if there was a crime happening. It was a way to to shout. Well, I would see, I I could see how that would get your attention. Like if someone ran out and started yelling hot beef. Right. It's kind of like yelling instead of saying help, you yell fire. Yeah. And that's what Maybe. it really was supposed yeah. to be. All kidding aside. But, mm-hmm. but when I hear hot beef, I, all I think about is uh bender in, in uh breakfast club, the breakfast club talking about the old uh, hot beef injection there. So mm-hmm. anyway, uh, it, it, I don't think that's what they were talking about, but hot beef, it could mm-hmm. have been it, sort of like, uh, kind of like the 23 skidoo. You yeah. Know? And I could see that being kind of a slangy term back then. Absolutely. And again, we talked about this in a previous episode about mm-hmm. how beef, like beans, like, you know, some of these other idioms, horses and cats and stuff, it's just what was around in everyday life. I mean, beef yeah. was... And, and also to bring it back to um, the English, um, as we had talked about in the past, roast beef being a very popular dish for the English to the point that the French insult them by calling him Les Roof Biff. So that is the perfect comment because that leads me right to my next thing, which is the beef deal, <laughs> the beef deal, mm. sorry. It, um, the, the, the thing with them yelling hot beef mm-hmm. is, and then meaning thief, 
that one doesn't seem as likely because that assumption is that it would be a a British English expression, hmm. which would then somehow become popular in the U S because the hot beef thing is a British thing. Mm-hmm. As you mentioned, they are known for loving their beef, love their roast beef, their roast beef. So the hot beef is like the roast beef. So that was a British thing. And this really became popular in the U S. So the leader in the clubhouse with the beef thing is that it's the American soldier. Okay. You know, so I didn't get enough beef, yeah. you know, or okay. I got, I have beef because of my beef ration. Mm-hmm. And so as I, I'd gone through the interwebs, just looking up beef, 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 all, you know, everywhere and coming up with all these things that I wasn't sure about, as always, I brought it back to worldwide words. And of course I found one, and this is where it all began, which was beefing. And, uh, Michael Quinion says that, you know, as we mentioned before, this term beef being used in this way has been around since the 1860s. And even before, as I mentioned before, so Mm -hmm. all the way back to 1725, Mm -hmm. he found in the New Canting Dictionary, 1725, to cry beef upon us. They have discovered us and they are in pursuit of us. So all the way back then, beef, crying beef was around. Yeah. I'm stunned I haven't heard this used as, or maybe I haven't, I blocked it out, but it sounds pretty new to me. It doesn't come up in like literature that I can remember or anything like that. Um. You know, there's another way that, that it's come up, which is, as we mentioned before, hey, what's the beef? You know, what's your problem? What's going right. on? And again, that's just another evolution of this thing that goes all the way back to 1725. Beef has been around. Um, so it's one that's hard to point to one thing, you know, mm-hmm. when things go back that far. Um, but it's a versatile phrase yeah. and word. And I want to sort of make sure I touch on this before we go any further and pretty much to wrap this one up, which is you can't do a beef idiom without mentioning one of the greatest ad campaigns of all time. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? And for younger listeners, it's hard to explain how ubiquitous this was back then. It was, it was absolutely everywhere. Um, I would actually rank where's the beef right up there with the California raisins. Mm -hmm. Actually probably higher. Because Where's the Beef was the height of comedy. When that thing came out yeah. in 1984, and if you haven't seen it, um, actually, we'll play a clip of this, and, and you can hear what it sounds like. It certainly is a big bun. It's a very big bun. Big, fluffy bun. It's a very big, fluffy bun. Where's the beef? Some hamburger places give you a lot less beef on a lot of bun. Where's the beef? At Wendy's, we serve a hamburger we modestly call a single. And Wendy's single has more beef than the Whopper or Big Mac. At Wendy's, you get more beef and less bun. Hey, where's the beef? I don't think there's anybody back there. You want something better. You're Wendy's kind of people. So, (laughs) you may not be, like, slapping your knee right now, but that was pretty funny back in 1984. When you had four channels. This was, Did, yeah. we said this before, like commercials were entertainment. I mean, mm-hmm. they were better than the shows sometimes. And just a couple quick facts. I'm not going to rehash the whole thing, sure. but the first fact is the initial name of this commercial and ad was titled fluffy bun because Sorry. the whole thing was about how the other, <laughs> the other uh, restaurants, McDonald's and Burger King had big buns mm-hmm. and not enough meat. And I think they sort of on the fly tried the where's the beef line and it just right. killed and they had to go with it. The other thing was the the wonderful uh, woman, the elderly woman that did this, her name was Clara Peller. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she demanded more in her fast food hamburger, obviously. Yeah. And she she got paid scale for this. But then she went on to she kind of became a little bit of a prima donna. She 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 made a ton of money in the pre, in the subsequent episodes and ended up using the the phrase in a Prego commercial Mm -hmm. and Wendy's cut all ties with her Mm -hmm. and she didn't feel very, and then she kind of had, there was a lot of smack talk and Mm -hmm. and dare I say beef Mm -hmm. between Clara Peller and, uh, and Wendy's, which is sad because they created something beautiful that ended up in just like the California raisins. I mean, they like made a, they, they made a song. I don't think it was as, as successful, but do you have more, where's the beef facts for us? Sure. Well, just to clarify also the California raisins weren't real. So they might have made a lot of money, but I think the raisins, just in case. I thought they were real for a while. I really felt <laughs> like they were there with us. But uh, Clara Peller is a little bit of a, a forerunner to the uh, Can You Hear Me Now guy. 
who's also done uh, the same sort of thing when he's betrayed right. Verizon for whatever lowbrow uh, service he's with now. Um, one of the things that was interesting about her life afterwards is some of the things that she did and also how it, it spread into pop culture. So um, she made an appearance at WrestleMania 2. Yes. So that's that's pretty impressive. I knew you'd like that part. Yeah. I saw that as well. She didn't get in the ring, if I remembered, but you never know. Um, also, her uh, catchphrase made it into the 1984 presidential election. That's right. Yes. So um, during the primary season, uh, Walter Mondale interjected it into a discussion with Gary Hart. And in that, you can see Walter Mondale showing the charm that helped him lose 49 states um, in the election afterwards. So just because it's a great catchphrase, you know, I think that demonstrates how well Claire Appella was able to deliver that. And again, it's one of those things that in 1984, this was absolutely everywhere. It was everywhere. And then they, I believe they tried to bring it back. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, they... Bring her back? Uh, no, she's she's gone. She's okay. not going to live as long as the cat, unfortunately. Okay. No, they brought back in 2011. Mm-hmm. Wendy's brought back the Where's the Beef tagline. But, you know, it's nothing. Advertisements, you know, they, there have been golden ages in advertisements. Yeah. We're in a, you know, what's a lo- lower than a Bronze Age? Right now with advertisements, we've got clickbait. We've got mm. all the bull crap that shows up on your well, computer. It's, it's tough to, I've noticed, um, I actually had a coworker before point out um, with streaming that his kids would watch things on Netflix. But yeah. when he, they would go to the grandparents' house, they would suddenly come back and have all these things they needed and wanted because they oh, were watching, watching TV. So I, I feel like um, I need to use this as a chance to give an update on Wendy's. So mm-hmm. several episodes ago, we discussed the decline of, of Wendy's, going from right. a mighty burger empire to pretty pretty down on us. They're far, like yeah. a, you know living on their laurels. So Wendy's very recently has announced that they are expanding their breakfast menu. Oh, I didn't even know they had breakfast. So step one, I didn't realize they had a breakfast menu. Mm -hmm. So I got to give, you know, I want to see Wendy's come back. I don't wish against Wendy's. I think it's, I want to see Wendy's become great again. Um, So just some of the things they're offering, a little little hit hit or miss. Uh, Hit breakfast Baconator. I'm in. I have a hard time. You put breakfast and Baconator oh. together. That's a, you know, that, and, I just need those two words. And good for them because that was right yeah. there for the taking. Um, on the other side, I'm not too sure about the honey butter chicken biscuit. Yeah. Which just even looking at it, it's like we're going to try to do Chick-fil-A except we're going to put more mustard on it. Right. Um, and I had had a couple years ago, uh, McDonald's tried to do a knockoff uh, Chick-fil-A biscuit. And it was like if alien, it, when I see the Beyond Meat. I, yeah. I have an idea of what that would taste like, like based on it was like a synthetic dupe of that. So yeah. anyway, Wendy's in in the eighties was at the top of their game. Mm-hmm. Clara Peller and you know they're they're trying to come back, and we're hoping we're hope we're rooting for you, Wendy's. We're disappointed in your where you are now, but we think you can come back. Yeah, I agree. And you know, where's the beef? Greatest commercial ever. Uh, before we move on from beef, mm-hmm. because I this is gonna be the last time I say it. Uh, one of just the I found so many great random usages of the word, but this was my favorite. Okay, there's another term that began to that began to appear in the late 1960s, and this is in the Syracuse Herald Journal in 1967 in an editorial review of the fabulous Fireside Inn, mm-hmm. and they said another specialty is the beef and reef platter. Mm. Or of broiled Alaskan king crab, a filet mignon with drawn butter. So instead of surf and turf, beef and reef. Have you heard that one? I have not. And I got to say, I'm, I'm, that's not making me. It makes me want to go have a breakfast baconator. Yeah. Much. <laughs> you want to go? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so before we end on beefs, when I, you know, being someone from the streets, as we, we've established, and spent a lot of time at 7-Eleven, rat beefs or right. something, I was thinking, I was hoping we'd get a chance to discuss. Yeah. Um, and this finally gives me a, a chance to go to the source.com, um, the website of the hip hop magazine, to talk mm-hmm. about some some key rap beefs throughout the years. Right. So I'm going to talk about some that I'm aware of and some that are just uh, letters on a page that I might be having a stroke if I try to read them. So one that I was very familiar with as a young man was the the Bridge Wars between Boogie Down Productions and the and the mm. Juice Crew. BDP. That's. Uh... Mm-hmm. Karis one, really one, one, the military Miss guy. Melody. Yeah. Ms. Melody, if I get that right. Mm-hmm. And the Juice Crew, 
who is again going to show my street knowledge here. You actually will like the these Jews crew. I wouldn't no, think they me. would. No, not Clara Pella. Peller is not involved with oh. this. This is the Juice Crew. Juice. Gotcha. Who in, was founded by producer Marley Marr. Yep. This, this posse included Biz Marquis. Yeah. Oh, God. Legend. Roxanne Shante. Okay. MC Shan. Mm-hmm. I'm a close strong. Cool G Rap. Yes. And maybe my all time favorite Golden Age rapper, Big Daddy Kane. Yeah. yeah. So big feud there, mainly between MC Shan and KRS1 that was somehow settled. And then they did a. They did a Sprite commercial a few years ago, which was weird <laughs> because I'm like, I got the reference. Wow. So a rap beef that I'm not familiar with, mm-hmm. and I'm not even sure if what. All right. So in one corner, we have YG, letter Y. Young letter Gravy? G. No. Unless, uh, it is a different one. No. I, don't, I don't know YG. Yeah. And the next one, T-E-K-A-S-H-I-6-9. Dude, yeah, that's you know who that is. Does it sound like I know who that is? I'm looking at a picture of somebody that looks he's got like, a tattoo on his face. Sixty nine. He's got a lot of. Ta- it looks like someone. He's oh. really famous. Yeah, he's in jail for uh, for pedophilia or something. He's bad. He's cool. a very bad person. Yeah. Okay, so I that actually is what is that? How is that pronounced? I have no idea. Okay, but he's got a tattoo of sixty nine. He's on his got face. multiple. He looks like someone uh, hooked up a car wash with tattoo ink and ran him yeah. through it repeatedly. He's he's known as probably the one of the most hateable faces and people in the world. It, it's a yeah. Let me make sure we're talking about the same. You're looking at a guy that has a tattoo of sixty nine on his forehead he's, and in his throat. He looks like he, you know, he's got like rainbow bright hair and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's awful. Okay. So he's got beef. So I'm for the other guy. So mm-hmm. I don't know who. I, I gosh, I wish it was Young Gravy. I don't know who Young Gravy would have beef with. The important thing is we brought Young Gravy back, and I think it is a meat themed episode. Yeah, gravy. It's appropriate that Young Gravy's involved in this one. So, mm-hmm. and the the last one I'll mention is NWA versus Ice Cube, which was a some that moment was in my life when he Ice Cube left NWA and released his album Westward Ho, which had several diss tracks. Pointed yes. against Western. against an NWA, but they all came. They came back together. They made a movie. All and, right, and straight out of Compton. Um, if you haven't had a chance to see it, it's to me, it's kind of like a, a kind of a rap version of Harry and the Hendersons. I watch those movies. If you put them on a screen next to each other, it's like you're watching the same thing. But that's just yeah. Me. Not enough John Lithgow. In, yeah, uh, but, but can you ever have enough? Never John Lithgow. Okay, so be, rap beefs. All right, so are we good on beef? Anything else you want to add? I like beef. I like beef ribs. I don't think beef ribs get enough attention. People I, if really, into, I mean, right. there's yeah. nothing wrong with pork ribs. Yeah, but it's it's meat. If you, um, I found with beef ribs, crock pot, they got to go a long time. Speaksies. This is Steve from Origin of Speaksies. I'm very excited to tell you about my first solo podcast for the Speaksies Network. Coming this spring, inspired by my love of nature, a podcast that provides a critical examination of animals and how they affect the world around us. Animals That Suck. In each episode of Animals That Suck, a special guest and I will discuss awesome animals like cats, possums, and Mindy the dog. Also, we will examine animals that are clearly terrible, like bears, raccoons, alligators, and probably your dog if you call it a fur baby. Animals that suck, coming this spring from Speaksies. For more information, go to speaksies.com slash animals. That's speaksies.com slash animals. Animals that suck, coming this spring from Speaksies. Speaksies. All right, so I think we have thoroughly gotten past beef episode. If you're a vegetarian or something, you probably have already turned off. But yeah. the next one is going to be chicken. Chicken. Now, when I say chicken, what do you think we're talking about here? I'm Any thinking. Thoughts? Well, I'm thinking it's meat themed episode, so yeah. I'm going first with food. I'm thinking. Yeah. Chicken, a lot of utility out of that. It's it's a meat that's a white meat, which somehow is healthier than red meat, which I think could be racist. Um, I think all the meats should live together and be eaten, and we shouldn't discriminate on color. Um, I but, agree. But chicken is kind of has this um, 
view of being a little bit healthier, which will probably rotate around. Because remember, red meat was really bad for you, just like cholesterol. And yeah. I think we've kind of gone full circle on that. Well, and- ch- chicken's been, well, and then it was like, have the, the boneless, skinless chicken breast. Yeah. And then it's like, because there's less fat. But really, the best way to have it is bone in, skin on, in my opinion. So. Yeah. And there's no double entendres with that in the least. No, but with, yeah, chicken. Okay. Well, let's, let's just roll on with this. What's your favorite type of chicken? How do you like your chicken? And give us some time. Give us some time. Yeah. There's a lot of ways. I didn't prepare you for this question. And actually I haven't thought of my own either. So despite the recent compromise that uh, Chick-fil-A has made, Mm -hmm. and by that, I mean, bringing in a kale salad. um, (laughs) I think, I guess a a derivative of fried chicken. So I like, I, I like a good, and I'm a big breakfast guy. So chicken biscuit, uh, Chicken minis are generally what I go with. Yeah. Uh, the chicken sandwich there. So fried, but it's not, I think the Chick fil A fried isn't that kind of hardcore fried. I had some real fried chicken over Christmas yeah. and my stomach just can't take it. I can take a couple pieces of that. I remember a kid, I'd love like, yeah. you know, get the skin and just eat all that. But I'm, I, you give me about two pieces and I'm done. Um, but when I'm pretending to be healthy, I think having just a good, you know, breast of chicken, mm-hmm. you can prepare, even I can prepare that. Can't right. grill it very well. I'm the guy that will give you the, you know, the the rare. If it was a steak, it'd be wonderful, but you probably don't want that for your chicken. Right. So I'm just, still just a warm pink center. <laughs> yeah, I'm still still not there yet as a man, which I should be. But I've just admitted that on the air, which is bad. But you know what I mean. It's I tough. think you're, you're, you're being self deprecating. No, I've seen you do a great job with grilling the chicken. You know Thank how you. to. It, just like love, it takes time, and you it's, can't tri- rush it's it. trial and error, and yeah. it's definitely something. I I'm not a good cook. There's not a lot of stuff I do well. I'm pretty good at, at chicken and mm. and grilling chicken. So. And I think what's cool about chicken also is in the same way that beef is very versatile in being a word, chicken can mean a lot of things too outside of outside of yes, just the food. Yes. So let's let's so chicken, I'm not chicken, the etymology itself isn't as fun as beef. So we're gonna we're gonna move out of that. That's not really what we do. I just I wanted to do it with beef so I could say it again. And look, I'm even bringing it back into the chicken episode. But mm. so Let's start with maybe my new favorite segment on the show, which is origin from Cora guy hmm. with no references. So if you would just bear with me, sure. I'm going to, I'm going to read this and, and let's see what you think. All right. This is from Cora guy. Chickening out, fudge. Chickening out may come from 1864 union army enlistment in which a chicken was provided to each person who enlisted. He would take the chicken home, clean, dress, and cook it for dinner. No refrigeration in those days. Thanks. The next day, he came back to ship off for the Union Army. Mm. All right, so I'll time out. First of all, all right, so in the 1864 Union Army, here's your... Here's your rifle. Here's your boots. Here's your boots. Here's your uniform. Here's your chicken. Here's Mr. Cluckers to take off with you to battle. Make sure you go home, clean, dress, and cook it for dinner. Yeah. Because no refrigeration. Okay. Right. Should he not come back, his name was printed in the local paper. Very shameful to the family name. Not like today. A relative with the same family name could fulfill the Army contract by enlisting instead of the original person. The Union Army didn't care as long as they got someone of war. This occurred to my great-great-grandfather on August 30th, 1864. He was a farmer in the southern Adirondacks of New York, 39 years old. He left his wife and four children to cover a contract to spare the family the shame and disgrace from a nephew who, quote, chickened out, mm. unquote. Like, this might be the worst one, right? It's bad. It's, it's pretty bad. I think the whole idea that as the, the country is divided and, mm-hmm. you know, people are, like, pulling their their rifles off their fireplaces to go to battle that there was some sort of infrastructure to mass produce and provide chickens to everybody. And if you, and Um, if you, and if you somehow, um, you know, deserted, you had quote, like chicken out, where's chicken number 17. Uh Oh, we've lost track of it. Somebody call the newspaper now and get that. So just to, just to wrap up this clearly false etymology at 39, he was not exactly frontline material. The Union Army made him a teamster driving supply wagons. Company E, 115th Regiment of New York Volunteers. He died of wounds he received at the front in Richmond, Virginia, from a sharpshooter on August 27, 1864. His place of burial has never been identified. And that's how they wrap it up. Um, So, 
I, I'm i starting to wonder, and here's what happens on these Quora boards, which actually are very helpful because sometimes mm-hmm. you get really good stuff with good references. Yeah. Some a-hole, or maybe the same guy that does all these, and I kind of want it to be the same guy. Yeah. I, I'm now starting to think he's trolling the people on Quora because because ne- then you get a lot of outraged nerds going, right. where's your references for this? And then and somebody trying to make it work and then go, no, this just this doesn't make any sense, dude. Like, none of this is real. But for me, as soon as I start reading this, and, and the thing that gives it away is when he said, no refrigeration in those days. Like whenever they have to give those qualifying like right. explanations, it's it's like you said last time, the, the lady doth protest too much. So yeah, especially again, the, the chicken infrastructure, I don't even think we could do that today, nor would anyone want to just the, the logistics of getting someone a chicken and then expecting them to handle it. Right. You got one night here. So, so yeah. you're already stressed out. You're away from home. You're about to go kill your, you know, your cousin, by the way, go ahead and take care of this chicken. So, all right, well, let's get to the important stuff. Marty McFly. Um, so I want to talk about Back to the Future a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know you're a fan. And frankly, if anybody yeah. listening is not a fan of the Back to the Future movies, go ahead and unsubscribe. But yeah. um, you remember the whole theme about him not wanting to be called chicken? Yeah. And it really it really set him off. And I think that was almost the thread of at least the second movie. And then just spur the events of the third one. Yeah, what are you, deaf and stupid? I said no. What's wrong, McFly? Chicken? <laughs> what did you call me, Griff? Chicken! McFly! <laughs> Nobody calls me <sighs> Chicken. So it's very interesting that you bring up. So that's you. You're a true Back to the Future fan that you noticed that. Mm-hmm. Well, let's. I found an interesting thread on Reddit called "Quote Why Marty Doesn't Like Being Called Chicken" in only mm. Back to the Future two and three, but isn't in the first film. Hmm. So in a way, it's interesting. In another way, it's like, good lord, we have too much time on our hands as a society. That we, right. <laughs> a lot of people chimed in on this, but well, then I started thinking about it. What was up with that? Yeah. So no, I think not- it, I think it's something that they they made the movie with the idea that there would be one, um, right. and when that's done, they realize they have to do a second one. So right. they at least, but to their credit, they filmed both those movies together, two and three. That's I remember right. that. I do too. And they shared at least a, one writer and a common cause. So sometimes you'll see movies that they'll they'll start a series of three movies and decide not just to plan out the basic plot of it, including adding people at the last second that overturn forty years of. Uh, development um, <laughs> just, you know yeah sometimes that happens mm-hmm. sometimes movies will rise up and do that too right, but right. I, I, I digress yeah but no but what you're saying makes makes total sense um, I want to I want to share with you um, a, a theory that, mm-hmm. that someone on Reddit had about this mm-hmm. um, and he said that the reason why so if in, in episode and I won't get it this is probably going to bore people. So I won't get into the details of, of all of the stuff that happened in two and three, where mm-hmm. Marty got upset about being called uh chicken. So the, the theory that I read on here, this one guy had, which was that <laughs> in two and three, mm-hmm. Marty is a, has been raised by, because he changed time when he did his time travel in the first one. Mm-hmm. Remember how his dad, George McFly went from a total wuss mm-hmm. to, you know, this cool guy yeah. that, that had good frames and, and wrote a book uh, and stuff. And so in the first one, this is Marty that's used to being raised by this guy and he kind of doesn't have as much pride. Mm-hmm. But then in the second movie, he's now been raised by the George McFly. That's mm-hmm. kind of a, a little bit of a badass. So now he's got, um, he has honor to defend mm-hmm. yeah, by a confident, successful novelist. Therefore, um, you know, that's why he doesn't like being called, a chicken because it doesn't, and you know, that's obviously ridiculous. I think yeah. the, the main thing is like what you said. Well, first of all, nobody really wants to be called a chicken. And secondly, it was just a theme that, that when they did the second and third one together, that they added in there. So anyway, this goes back actually to Marty has had issues with not wanting to back down to a challenge. You see it all throughout the movies. Yeah. And it started with, uh, back in 1985, the character needles, mm-hmm. um, 
was indirectly responsible for ruining Marty's life by talking him into racing their trucks. Marty hmm. ended up crashing uh, the Rolls Royce he was driving, broke his hand in the accident, which made him give up on music. So hmm. this is what happened. Uh, they explained this, I think, in the second one, right? Right. That sounds right. Yeah. And uh, so they kind of explained it back. And, and even though you didn't see it much in the first one, it was all it was part of Marty's character all along. So hmm. chicken. Nobody wants to be called chicken. Yeah. Where did that come from? So the my main source on this one for where it really came from is the online independent magazine. This is another one that goes back pretty far. And just like beef, it's kind of changed over time. So initially it was meant kind of to mean um, kind of like perky and mm-hmm. and like a chicken is kind of plucky, right? Mm. So there was a bare knuckle prize fighter. So this one goes back to fighting, mm. boxing. Um, Henry or Hen Pierce from 1707 or – well, he, he died in 1809, mm-hmm. but he was known as the Game Chicken. The Game Chicken. And it referred, and, and as they said on in The Independent, it referred to his perkiness in mm. the ring. And that's okay. their word, perkiness. Um, yeah. From there, it turned into being weakness. Hmm. So the uses, the primary use that we find after that um, suggests weakness. So early use actually meant to mean a girl or a woman, mm-hmm. um, which is where chick came from, oh. calling someone a chick. Hmm. All right, so after the whole weakness thing, it sort of became the the word started getting used for being a coward, and that was in 1600. So William Kemp's Nine Days Wonder said it did him good to have ill words of hotty dotty, a hebberdy hoy, a chicken, a squib. So he's calling it. So all the way back to 1600, he's calling this guy a chicken, hmm. um, and that stuck all the way into 1844. Um, Dickens, Martin Chuzzlewit. These names don't seem real. Yeah. Um, this guy, Martin Chuzzlewit, says, Why? Wait, a chicken you are. You are not afraid of being robbed, are you? So there you have it in 1844. Um, it also at some point meant like a weak or naive person. Yeah. So in 1794, it was used as you are not such a chicken as to suppose if so be as you're innocent that you will make your game altogether. You know, I hate these quotes because they don't really make sense. So what's interesting to me about that is in the same way that like we discussed recently, horse sense, horses don't jump out to me as like very intelligent animals. Right. Like chickens aren't like the most intimidating animals I've ever seen. Right. But they also don't come across as like the weakest. No, they'll peck your eyes out. Yeah. But maybe that's just because I basically spend all my time indoors away from animals as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably smart to be honest with you. So, so anyway, the thing with chickens is pretty straightforward. I wanted this one in here because we get to talk about, um, you know, I could go on and on reading quotes. This has been around forever. So Mm -hmm. like, uh, you call somebody a chicken liver, meaning you're scared. Um, it really does just have to do with the nature of the animal. Doesn't have anything to do with deserting in the civil war. And nobody really likes to be called. I mean, do you? Would you like to be called chicken? It's not. I don't think so. But you know, now you've said that. Like, even though we know we know the definition of it, it is something that if someone called you that, I still almost get that Marty McFly kind of hair on my neck up. Like it's like you're, you're challenging uh, my my masculinity. You're challenging right. my 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 manhood if you say that. Yeah, there's other ways it could be said now. You know, I mean, people can challenge you without saying it that way. People don't probably call call anybody chicken. Um, there's also the the game of chicken, right? With the mm-hmm. cars, um, I has it, you know I don't know how, how many people actually do that, but yeah. um, other than in movies back in the day, but so there are lots of meats we could talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, what I like about this too is we've left some meats on the table, exactly. Pun intended. So there's a future. I mean, there's definitely in the same way that Back the Future ended you know, kind of asking for a sequel. I feel like that you've set this up, that we've been able to discuss beef. Yes. And the the extreme versatility that the cow provides. Right. And also chicken. I feel like we've learned some history, learned some fake history. But at the end of this... We have the meats. We, we've got the meats, and there's still more. There are more. Where we're going, we don't need roads. This is Steve at Origin of Speaksies. Thank you very much for listening to our show today you enjoyed our show, we ask you to please leave us a five-star rating and also a positive review on Apple Podcasts. When you do, please send me a screenshot of your review to steve at speaksies.com or look us up at speaksies on Twitter 
and we will read your review on air and give you a shout out, all for free. So, if you enjoy our show, please give us a five-star rating and positive review on Apple Podcasts. Send us a copy to steve at speaksies.com or DM us on Twitter. It sounds very dirty now that I've said that out loud. And we will read your review on air. Thank you again for listening to Origin of Speaksies. Beef, 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 all, you know, everywhere.